or close enough, I'm hoping she could get Crimson up and running, you know, turning a profit. That is, if Todd Manning lets her, which I'm sure he will. I mean, he, he's a successful guy, and Crimson is an A-list publication. We were building circulation until Kate had her meltdown. What does this have to do with you not being able to babysit tonight? Oh, well, I'm hoping that Kate will reinstate me as her first assistant. And Sunny called today and asked. Actually, it was more like ordered, you know, how Sunny is. Anyway, I'm planning Sunny and Kate's wedding. So I showed up at his house today completely prepared, and Kate shot down all of my ideas. She said I needed to think more fun, which actually she means I need to think more tacky. But, you know, it's Kate's wedding. She can have what she wants. And? And I have to find a space for the bachelorette party. She specified she wants a dive bar. The way things are going, she probably wants the reception held at a bowling alley. And she wants Chinese. I mean, this place is kind of haute chinois. Maybe Kate's on to something. But pulling off a wedding by October 2nd, I mean, that's going to take a miracle. Which is why you can't babysit tonight. I'm really sorry, Patrick. I could find you a babysitter or something. It's okay. Maxie, it's okay. I, I don't have to go on the date. It's, it's really not, not a big deal. Date? You were going to go on a date? Sabrina, we were having a conversation, remember? Sorry, I was daydreaming. Well, I need you to focus. I can't leave for my date if I don't know my paperwork's been handled. Your date, I remember. There's another stack in my office. And when you finish... Trust your scrubs. Will you be wearing the yellow or the blue, miss? I was going to say refill the hand sanitizer. Strange girl. Oh, Steve. Steve. What can I do for you? Yes. I understand you were quite the hero during this whole Joey Jacks disaster. All I did was run the ER. And since I doubt you're here to pin a medal on me, this must be about my mother. Yeah. It is. Heather's has been at large for more than 72 hours. Now. I already spoke to deputies. I told them that I haven't spoken with her since she left Winkliffe. Did she give you a sense at all of her plans? Commissioner, if I knew she was planning to escape, you'd be my first call. Anything else? No. I understand why you're angry. I do. I'm frustrated. I'm appalled, actually, mostly by the staff at Ferncliff. I mean, how could they let her escape? And where is she gone? She's without resources. My mother has no money. She has no one to turn to. This is still her former boss. Carly, I'm glad you're here. I I've been meaning to tell you something. I had dinner at the hotel restaurant the other day. I had the chicken marsala. Really salty. Goodbye, Todd. Have dinner with me. Yeah, come on. I want to have dinner with you. That way, you know, if the staff is there, they'll probably be paying better attention. I I'm here with Johnny, you know. You could get a nurse. I'm a really good customer. Wouldn't want me to take my business elsewhere, would you? I would. Don't gauge. <laughs> Carly's right. You're very fragile. You might pop a stitch and bleed to death. That'd be awful. Carly, can you do me a favor? There's some tea um, in the kitchen, in a cabinet to the left above the stove. Will you make me some, please? Tea. It's very yeah. restorative. Don't upset him. Idiot, you almost blew it for both of us. You don't hate with greed to keep your mouth shut up you've done your child killing someone. Else, but I refuse to like you. Oh. If you even think about telling Carly what I've done, I will expose you. Nobody's so going to hear about you switching those babies from me, all right? Listen, we have a problem. Someone else could open her mouth. Records indicate that the baby's blood type was AB negative. Sam and Frank are both O positive. They couldn't be that baby's parents. Was it possible the ME entered the wrong blood type on the no, form? No, Sam donated the baby's tissue. We're still in the lab. The AB negative is confirmed. So the child who died that night is not Sam's. Couldn't have been. Okay, what else you got? Lungs weren't developed. Autopsy report said he couldn't have lived even if he was on a ventilator and the baby that you delivered that night in the motel was strong and was crying Breathing out. perfectly. Yeah, Breathing it perfectly. Always, it always bothered me that he got so sick so fast. Sam was always regular with her prenatal screenings. Everything showed that that baby was perfectly healthy, no indications of a lung problem or hemophilia. The baby that died that night had both. And then you throw in the, the fact that the blood type does not match, it couldn't have been that child. So how did they get switched? Well, we know Sam left the motel. She wandered out into the woods, she fell in the garden shed, she put the baby down, she went inside looking for help, and she passed out. Now, as close as I can figure it, 
She was unconscious anywhere between 15 and 45 minutes. 45 minutes, that's your window of opportunity that someone could have taken her son. Heather had access to that shack. It's where she held Luke, Luke Spencer prisoner. That was later, though. Spencer was in custody that night. Heather wasn't. A cop pulled Heather over on Route 59 near mile marker 13. It's the road closest to that shack. She had a passenger, what turned out to be Anthony Zakar's corpse. She buried Anthony about 100 yards from that shack. Oh, so Heather was out there, right? right. Yes. Well, without another infant, I mean, you can't make your theory work. Steve Weber treated a Miss Taya Delgado and her newborn son the night of the storm. She had her baby at a bus stop on Route 59, not far from that shack, and when the baby was born, he wasn't breathing. The man with Miss Delgado took her son and went looking for help. Man. Local for Luke Heather Webber was all about the baby switch because it was her idea. I only went along with it because I was in shock and because she lied to me. The, the, the lie of omission. She neglected to tell me that Sam actually wanted to keep her child. Oh, please stop. No, there's no excuse for what you did. But see, lucky for you, it doesn't matter because Heather is what, certifiable and locked up at Ferncliff. She's escaped. She could tell her story to anyone. Well, looks like you got yourself a little problem there. No, Johnny. My problems are your problems. Spinelli, you know I love you. And so does Jason. You're our best friend. And you know I, I, I do anything for you, both as individuals and as a couple, which you are clearly meant to be. Yes, I know, and that is the problem. What, what do you mean? Well, it's just that, that there's a point where your devotion to all things Sam and Jason, it just it becomes a little unfair. I wasn't aware I'd caused you any grief. I'm sorry. It's just that Jason and I are human. We make mistakes. We, we mess up. We fail. And I think that you put us on this pedestal and make us live up to these certain expectations, and it's just not realistic, and you're only setting yourself up for disappointment. What, should I, so should I ask less of people, and that will in turn make me happier? No. But, I'm sorry, this isn't about me and my expectations. But the truth is, you love Jason, and, and he loves you. And yes, you've had your share of difficulties, but you still may yet prevail. Sam, you deserve a happy ending. Oh. And it may not happen overnight, but just... Don't give up on Jason. Not now. Not a minute before the miracle. What, what do you mean? What miracle? Well, love, love, love is a miracle, and it, it will, it will grace you yet again. There's just you got to give it time. I'm sorry, Spinelli. It's just that Jason and I have put this divorce off long enough. Okay. Well, then what's one more day? Why are you pushing this so hard? What's so important about today? Do you need to ask? It's your anniversary. I know. I know. And I didn't plan it this way. I just want to be able to move on and put it all behind me. The same way you moved on from Maxie. Patrick, I'm sorry that I messed this up for you. Can I get another fortune you? cookie for Emma, please, Mr. Pleasure. You had only Thank told you. me it was a date. I thought it was just some I stupid I didn't want to make it a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, it's important. What, what were you planning on wearing on this date, by I the way? I was going to wear this. And now that I'm going home to sit on the couch with Emily in Chinese food, I'm actually overdressed. No, I will go home and no. hang out with Emma, okay? This, this could be your first chance at getting a new life. It's not a big deal. I was going to have dinner with a colleague and get to know each other a little bit and maybe, you know, in, in a, a little bit of a bonus, find a new friend. That could be good. And maybe your new friend karma would rub off on me. Why? What's the problem with you? Spinelli is still refusing to be my friend. So you gotta give him a little bit of time. Are you sure you don't want me to go hang out with Emma? No, honestly, I'm kind of relieved. I haven't been on a date in a really long time, and I'm a little bit out of practice, so, um, yeah, I'm starting to feel pretty nervous about it, but now, I don't have to. Do you know why Todd Manning would have hired your mother as a columnist? I always thought it was strange. My mother was never a writer. Yeah. It's not the first time that he's gone out of his way for her. You know, when we picked her up after Anthony's body was found, she was downright smug. She said she was going to get away with all the charges, and then when you were scrambling to find a lawyer, she just went ahead and called Mr. Manning. Do you really think she would turn back to him? I don't know. 
looks worth looking into. I'll let you know if I find anything, okay? Commissioner Devane, I need a location on Todd Manning, please. It's not my fault you can't rein Heather in. Okay, you might want to take notes. You've had blabs that Taya's baby's not actually Taya's baby, and the how and the why and the who involved comes out. I might be put in a position where I have police scrutiny. And normally, believe me, I can talk myself out of almost anything. But I might be put in a position where I have to give the police something that they want in exchange for my freedom, and that would be you. I thought we had a deal. All deals are negotiable and lucky for you. This one is still fluid. I just need to know if I can count on you where Heather Weber is involved. Okay, well, if Connie threatens to squeal instead of Heather, can I count on you? Talking about what's going on with Connie? Do we have a deal? What do you mean, deal? I've always wanted you and Maxie to make it, but it turns out that you weren't right for each other. And I've accepted that. And you know what, Spinelli? I'm proud of you because you were able to move on. Now Jason and I, we have to do the same thing. But you're mistaken. Jason hasn't moved on. I, I saw Jason with Elizabeth on his birthday. She threw him a private birthday party. You're, you're misunderstanding. Elizabeth is helping no, Jason. No, I am not. They were kissing, Spinelli. And it was mutual. You know what? It's, a, it's fine. It's fine because I'm getting a divorce. No, it's okay. Please believe me. Jason's doing everything he can to make up for what he did. I've already forgiven Jason for what happened with the baby. But our, our problems, they've run deeper than that. Spinelli, you just, you've got to accept that we're over. Well, in, in point of fact, I don't. And nor do I have to watch you serve these papers to Jason. Sam, you have a right to your feelings, but you're making a mistake. Jason and I agreed that we weren't going to hurt each other anymore. A year ago today, you and Jason stood in the courtyard behind knew a Buddha and exchanged vows. You swore to try to make it work till death do you part. You can at least give it one more day. Okay, I guess birth. There's a problem with the baby. And she hands him off to Todd. And Heather's in the woods around that same time burying Anthony. Okay. So Heather, Todd, and Sam, they all converge on the shack, and the babies are switched. Uh, see, that's what I have a problem with. You know, Manning, Weber, yes, there's no way Taya's involved well, in this. She, maybe she didn't know about it. Taya did say that Todd took off with the baby, and she didn't meet up with him until later when the baby started breathing on his own. Yes, exactly. It's not her baby. Manning. He owed Taya, he owed Taya for killing her husband. You know, he would have done anything including stealing someone else's baby to guarantee her a healthy child. But where does Heather Weber fit in on this? Well, according to Taya Delgado, Manning ran into a good Samaritan, an unidentified woman who performed CPR and got the baby breathing. Heather Weber. Well, that explains her interaction with Manning, you know, him giving her a job with the son and all the legal support. Of course, we can't talk to Heather. She escaped from Ferncliff. There's just one problem. Todd Manning. He used to live here in Landview. And then he killed his brother. That's who Taya thinks is your daddy. You see, the deal is, Todd tried to call Taya last week. I managed to erase the message, but sooner or later he's going to get through. And then Taya's going to tell him about her marvelous new nanny. And then he's going to tell her... That I am not actually Susan Moore, and then we're going to have a problem. So, here's what I'm thinking. While Tay is stuck in court, you and I are going to take a little trip. What do you say? Road trip? <laughs>